Recently, I have been uh, following closely Professor Ian Shapiro's course on politics and the history of the last 30 years, a course given at Yale University. Enjoyable lectures overall that helped me structure my ideas, though I do entertain the thought that the way most people think about politics these days is outdated, to say the least. Outdated by far. And I did come up with the thought of studying power from a structural perspective and laid down the following sketch on this issue. A. We are considering a pyramid structure which is pixelated. There exists one pixel at the very top of the pyramid, two or more pixels below it, and so on and so forth in a hierarchical fashion. That is the so-called board of the game, a pyramid. Connoisseurs may know that the all-seeing eye is in fact missing from the center of the pyramid and that mistake is intentional. I do, however, apologize for the mistake in question. The rules may vary and in some cases the objective of this one-player game is to color the entire pyramid from white to black, pixel by pixel, or the purpose may be to obtain some form of structural control over the pyramid in question such that any pixel can be colored in black if this is necessary. Notice this is working top-down in game theory, meaning we begin with a very abstract idea of the situation we want to model, and from that idea we proceed by adding the necessary elements of the game, tailoring the rules of the game last. Rules for, rules for coloring may be those of adjacency, respecting hierarchy, namely that any top pixel colored in black may be able to color all, or a percentage of the pixels placed immediately below it. There may exist many variations. B. Now, of course, the obvious strategy is coloring the top pixel in the structure and through adjacency, the entire structure shall eventually become black. Yet this may not be the correct strategy if we need extreme computational efficiency, such as in C, getting rid of or coloring, if you prefer, a particular pixel placed in the hierarchy in a random fashion. And we may be able to proceed tailoring the rules of the game, such as to account for D, the idea of public opinion, for example, a very important driving force in society in general. Notice that if we insert a line through the pyramid, parallel to the base and high enough, the portion of the hierarchy that is below the line will greatly exceed numerically, or by number of pixels, if you prefer the portion above it. A convenient case for those of us that like to keep the structure white. Of course, we are able to study other types of geometries, such as E, the round table. Notice there's a perfect square there. A perfect square is a round table, no doubt about that. This particular scenario describes the idea of veto, or exclusive or here, majority towards a policy. A very nice policy-making setup, probably my favorite. The idea is that in order to move from a status quo to another, either a consensus or else a numerical majority is required. Yes, I like this geometry very much. I'm a huge fan of round tables. But I also like, if, the rectangle, a geometry that models the idea that there exist two parties playing a role in a particular decision process, possibly a party in the majority and one in the minority, acting with the purpose of censorship towards the one in the majority. And finally, G, a strategy for debilitating the adversary. These are uh, the two points I have managed to come up with so far for, let's say, a guaranteed strategy. And these two points are as follows. One, prevent the adversary from congregating a defensive strategy. And two, establish control over adversary communication, a passive offensive strategy. Thanks for the attention.